Good afternoon and welcome to the Author Spotlight. My name is Aurelia Wynn. I'm the owner and operator of Wynn Publications. If you don't mind introducing yourself, telling us your name, a little bit about who you are and what you do outside of writing. All right. So hello, everyone. I am Simeon Cole Fletcher. Uh, I am uh, a captain in the Air Force. I've um, been doing that for about six years now. It's a pretty, pretty good time. Um, I work with airplanes, and probably the easiest, simplest way is work with airplanes and the people who fix them. Okay. Um, been all, a lot of places in the world uh, with that, so Japan, uh, Australia, Korea, you know, good stuff like that. And now oh. I'm currently just chilling out in California. Nice. Wow. I am talking. So I've spoken with maybe five people that serve our country as a soldier in that way. So first of all, thank you so much. It's such an honor. I don't know how you guys have time to write books. So I'm going to ask you what I ask them all the time. How do you find time to also write? Right. So what I found is, you know, when you, when you add up TV time and like, you know, time where you're kind of like procrastinating on chores, gaming and stuff like that, you really look at that in a 24 hour period or like a week, there's actually can be a lot of disposable time. Granted, I don't have kids yet, so that could definitely mm-hmm. change when there's, you know, little VSs running around. Um, but there's definitely disposable time, um, even like your lunch break, you know, you can, you know, once I had my manuscript written, um, you can get in the habit of, I don't know, editing half of a chapter by proofreading through on your lunch break, like on your phone or something like that. There's, there's mm-hmm. maximizable time and spaces, uh, and that's basically where my stuff came from. And then, like, weekends. Oh, my God. I, okay. I jam through weekends for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, nice. So, well, let's talk about your book then. What is it called? What genre does it relate to? All right, so my book is uh, a YA uh, sci-fi slash fantasy. It's how it was in all my query letters. Um, it's called Beasts Within Our Blood. Uh, and basically, the premise is, uh, you think about Avatar The Last Airbender, how there were those four nations. Well, in mm-hmm. mind, there are five nations, uh, and their powers vary from some of them have super strength, some of them have uh, like heightened awareness with the spirits and you know, elements of the forces, and then uh, w- you know, all the way to one of them doesn't have any powers except they're, they're highly technological, and so they're just like, okay, we got to build ourselves up with augments so we can compete with the other nations. So mm-hmm. basically, you take that, 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 that kindling pot of, of, of potential conflict of, amongst the five nations, and the book centers on what happens when all of them are at each other's throats, or at least they were in the past. So mm-hmm. you've seen a war with them, global war, and um, when we open up into our book, our main character is trying to prove himself in that world. He wants to be like a peace for force, or sorry, a force for peace. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of the gemstone, the cornerstone of the entire thing is uh, amongst those five nations, since they've had a global war, they set up a institute called the Discipline of Peace, and they basically send all of the superpowered teenagers there to be like governmental delegates in the future. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so basically, if you take, you know, it's, I, I, I love saying who my inspirations are. Um, Ender's Game was a huge inspiration for me. And okay. I say almost like to say Ender's Game slash uh, Avatar Last Airbender. Take all yeah. those nations, put them in a high tense environment, and then kind of just see where the story takes you. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How do you even think of something like that? <laughs> like... So, uh, the way that I came up with that idea, it was super funny. Um, I was on a walk with my dog, and I had never watched the Harry Potter series before. And I said, uh, you know, I was like, yo, I love that whole series. The movies were so cool. And I said, but you know what I really wanted was, like, the fight scenes to be more, uh, more raw, right? Mm-hmm. Anime fan, and, I, and I get a lot of that. I was like, wouldn't it have been cool if you looked at, the, you know, they had a battle, and one person points their wand at the ground and says... Ursicus, eat your face again. And like the entire <laughs> arena just like towards the other person. And the other dude is like, no way. And he's like, feed a kiss, shift a kiss. And he like blinks across the teleport and whacks the dude on the back of the head. I was like, what would a world look like if that was what all of the fight scenes were? And yeah. just created the nations behind the fight scenes. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's some yeah. serious talent. Wow. Okay. So tell us again the name of your book and where can we find it? So currently it is Beasts Within Our Blood. And for me, so I am not self-publishing. I am um, just became an agented author about two weeks ago. Um, so Congrats. I'm represented by uh, Kyle Literary uh, Elite. Mm-hmm. And so basically for me, we are starting the submission process like like now. This is ground zero. Mm-hmm. So um, I sent my query letters out, all that, I got my agent. And actually after this phone call, we have a conversation with her to kind of talk about like my uh, our strategy and who we'll be uh, pitching to for publishing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. maybe update in the future. Uh, but for yeah. now, it is, it is uh, about to be on sub- submission. Nice. First of all, congrats on getting the agent. That's cool. You're probably no, no, no. I actually so when when we were talking about getting you to come on, um, you were the only person that I knew that had been published. But the guy I spoke to before you, he also has a publisher that he's working with. So I'm like, wow. Okay, so I I love the variety of the author spotlight and just those people that say yes to me and that get on and that I speak to it's actually really cool and so you know uh tell us a little bit about your experience um just uh sending out those letters and you know all of that yeah so for me that started about three quarters of a year ago once my manuscript was uh finished and then I immediately went through and did like another round of edits um all of this was with the objective of in August of 2019 I had a writer's conference that I was going to Mm -hmm. um and, and to be honest, uh, there's definitely, you know, questions that, that, that we're going to cover in the future, but I'd just like to put some to the listeners out there. Mm-hmm. Writers' conferences are, like, an, an untapped gem. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, there's just something about being in person with not only agents, because, you know, it, it's great to meet agents, but it's also great to connect with other authors mm-hmm. because that steel sharpens steel is, is invaluable. That's mm-hmm. what makes you presentable to the agents. Uh, but yeah, I got to pitch to the person who is my agent now, um, face-to-face, presented them with a lot of my material, my query, my marketing. Um, I'll talk about that too later. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it was nothing. I heard nothing. And I was like, okay, well, that's just part of the query trenches, right? Mm-hmm. We've all been there. And so uh, for the next uh, half a year up until like the New Year's of 2020, I was uh, putting out queries, pitches, I did pitch wars, I did pit mad, anything that I could get myself out there. Uh, mm-hmm. But I was not hearing anything, which is okay. Um, and then it was like New Year's week or New Year's Day, um, the person I pitched to said, hey, that manuscript that you sent me, I finally was able to get to it. Um, her exact words were, because uh, she worked as an editor and as an agent, she was like, I was only going to read the first couple of chapters and then go on to do some editing work. And she said, but it's one in the morning that I'm emailing you because I just binge read the entire thing overnight. Mm. And it's still available. And that's how it happened. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. amazing. So then let's go ahead and get into some advice. And can you offer any advice or uh, lessons to just other writers and maybe even just the self-publishers that are listening today? Yeah, absolutely. So this one applies to both um, self-publishers and and, and, and authors, um, like who are who are going to, uh, looking towards being published. Mm-hmm. The thing is, uh, once you get an agent and once you start talking to publishers, there's a, a huge amount of like Venn diagram crossover. The, the marketability, the face, the presentation comes down to you on both sides of the house, whether you're doing it yourself or whether you are agented. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that people have to realize early. Um, getting your face out there early is very important, and by that I mean, like, kind of understand what your brand is. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I was writing, I was like, okay, who is this book for? Like, obviously it's for me, I'm really excited to be writing for myself, but who is the, 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 who is this a love letter to? And for me, when I started writing down those characteristics, it was like anime fans, it was gamers, it was Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So early, when I'm still, like, halfway through my draft, I make sure to plug into those communities to find out what they're interested in. What anime are you watching? Oh, okay, I can be inspired by that. What Mm -hmm. uh, what what trends are you guys kind of looking at? That the closer you are to that, the more it's going to reflect in your work. Mm -hmm. So 
A, know your brand and kind of like your audience in that in that way. Um, the other piece of advice is market yourself or rather invest in your appearance early. Mm. I wrote my entire um, book, plus did like my master's degree on this old dusty la- uh, laptop that I had, like a hundred dollar laptop. It's not about like the tech, mm-hmm. it's about investing in like your appearance. So when someone comes up to you and they're like, oh cool, you're writing a book. One of the first things they're gonna ask you is either where can I find it or do you have a website? Mm-hmm. And if in that moment you can't direct them to something that you possess, that's, you're not going to, they're not going to remember you six months from now. Yeah. They're not going to remember that a year from now, right? Um, so capturing that initial momentum with something that you can present yourself with, presentation. Um, so, 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 and, and then the third thing is, um, there's some sites and like some YouTube videos that say like writing in this process can be expensive. Like, oh, if, if I want to market myself, that means I need concept art that costs three, four hundred dollars mm. plus world maps plus all this kind of stuff. There is, we live in 2020. Like, there's so much free resources out yeah. there, and all that it takes to offset costs is research. Yeah. Um, I like wanted to have a map for my uh, for my query letters and when I wanted to pitch to my agent I wanted to say hey so you have my vision this is my map this is the artwork blah 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 um I did all of that stuff online with free editors I made a world map for free online I Mm. made like title cards for my book like if you ever go through uh you know something from Barnes and Nobles and it has part one part two part three and Mm. like really nice like logo art I made that stuff free online with a logo editor. Wow. And then you can even turn around and I took that stuff and it was like uh, like, like paw prints. I put it on the, the email if you ever check it out. Um, mm. But it's basically like a paw print with wings and a snake to kind of like represent, oh, these are the animals in my book. I slapped that on a t-shirt and when I pitched to the agent, my dream agent, I handed her the t-shirt with my art on it and with my name like in my book and my IG and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But that's all stuff that I was able to do myself through research. So offset your costs with research is kind of like my third point. Yeah. Wow. So much information. And I say this, I kid you not, I say this in almost every episode, is get your pen and paper out. If you're listening, yeah, I say it. And people are probably like, Aurelia, come on. No, but for real. Like, I, yeah. if you're listening to this in the car, because that's what people do with podcasts, we listen to them on the go, when you get home, put, put this up, get your pen and paper out, and, and write some stuff down, man. There's, there's so much work to do and so much free knowledge, and I love it. I love it. I really do. I like the term that you said for it in a couple podcasts ago. You called it nuggets, and I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get these nuggets. Eat them up. Okay. <laughs> So, so then what was your toughest challenge then that you faced uh, in becoming uh, almost, well, I would say you're an author, yeah. What, what has yeah. been your toughest challenge so far? Um, so the toughest challenge, and I feel like this is going to resonate with a lot of people, is when you hear nothing back, wondering if, like, you're a fraud, mm. or wondering if it's good enough, mm. um, when... I, I was on a high, like that's the thing with writing and submitting is it's a lot of highs and lows, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're you're out there and you've got that high energy at a, at a conference or you sent out your query letter and you get that hope, right? And then boom, rejection or boom, rejection. Mm-hmm. Um, probably like one of the lowest moments I had was during, I want to call it pitch wars. Uh, there were like four or five mentors that I got to select and say, hey, I, I want you to look at my material. Please check it out maybe we get to work together and there's this lady she was so cool i was like oh man you were right up my alley the way that your blog sounds mm-hmm. it's like right up my alley the the work that you've put out it sounds just like so close to what i want to do and then on top of that she worked with um people who were like my uh oh, what, like comparable titles so mm-hmm. like when i would say avatar last airbender that's something that is kind of like my, a comp title she was like involved with the production of that back in the day and i was like oh you are the 100 percent person who should read this and i heard nothing i just like oh, man. I got nothing from pitch force and for about a month after that i was like I- i've done all of this work i just know if i could just get a small amount of attention it could be okay. 
Mm-hmm. But I can't get that. And then, and then that was a, a, a really like sobering moment for me because I was like, well, you know, like, like how long until I kind of get that? Um, and another thing too is like a worst fear, right? Mm-hmm. I've, I, I had heard like, I, I listened to a lot of YouTube um, and a lot of podcasts in order to even learn about the writing process before I had even put like pen to paper. Mm-hmm. And they were, you know, when you're learning about people's experiences, they were like, look, sometimes the manuscript that you have, it's just like, it's never going to be the one. But the lessons that you learn from it are going to be the one that makes your next one the one. And mm-hmm. I was like, like, how as an author do you know when that moment is? You know, yeah. how do you know when to close the close the cover and say, "Cool, I gave this one a good try," mm-hmm. and you put it away? That was that was definitely a challenge for me. Was kind of like maintaining that self esteem. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I, I think that's something that we all kind of get over. And if I'm being honest, the hack to beating that is community. Yeah. writing community specifically. When you have a writer friend or you have a critique partner, someone who, who not a potential fan or a potential reader, but someone who is putting in that same life, blood, sweat, soul effort, mm-hmm. you guys can be each other's lifesaver. Otherwise, yeah. So reach out. <laughs> reach out. <laughs> Man, yeah, that is the truth. So let me tell you about my first book so i wrote a book for for christian single mamas i'm part of that community as well and uh it was terrible oh my god it was my first book and it was terrible i didn't hire an editor but my thing was so i had i already had uh my first client as a publisher and i was like i'm not gonna publish this woman's book without having my own book published first and so i was like let me do it let me make sure i have all the skills like i knew i could but i hadn't really you know in theory i could do it but i hadn't really ever really really done it and so i was like let me just do it oh my god i put it out there i was so excited i had 30 people buy it and they all left reviews talking about the typos and i was like oh no no. so i looked at it and i was like sure enough oh all these typos all these missing words the style the design was off oh my god i shut that book down so fast i was like oh no nobody is gonna know about this (laughs) and so i get it but like you said the one thing that i did learn one was that i'm capable of doing it two i did it i got it out there i made all these mistakes i will always hire an editor now and all these things but you know, if I never did it, I we wouldn't be here today. And right. so I just think you just, like you were already saying, just you got to do it. And then absolutely having a community helps so much. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, you know, just working with writers and authors and just people who have dreams of writing even has been so much fun. Literally with just yeah. in the last year, I, I'm like, wow, okay, this this is a good place to be. So I yeah, couldn't agree like, more. Like writing is a solo activity, but it's not a solo experience. Yeah. And if you if you keep it as a solo experience, like you're gonna you're gonna have a rough time when you need to reach out. So yeah. please reach out. Yeah, what what do you say? Because, you know, also I hear from a lot of self-published authors uh, within the last few weeks since doing this po- uh, podcast is, you know, they don't have support. They struggle. Really, I guess our expectation when we first begin is that we'll have support from our family and our friends. And a lot of uh, people get discouraged when that support isn't there. Do you, right. Can you speak to that at all? Oh, absolutely. Um, so for me, I- I'm blessed in that. I have a supportive family, but I definitely know that they, I have a nice, like, I hate to call it a real job, but Mm -hmm. that's kind of the thing, that's like the number one thing that we have to combat as writers is when you present your story or you present your hobby, and then it's like, well, don't forget your real job, right? Mm -hmm. And that can be super, like that that first blow to the gut, you know, when you're like, this is my dream, well, don't forget your day job type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fortunately have a family who is very encouraging. But they also want me to keep my mind focused on, on where it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I guess my advice in that realm is no one will ever understand or be as passionate for your work as you will be. Mm-hmm. Ne- never forget that. Like, yeah. it, 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 it doesn't matter how polished or how loud. No one will ever be as enthusiastic as you. Now, 
in the future, when you get those fans and they're like into your art and stuff like that, you know, you have like almost like toxic fan base that you've heard of, but they're just like, you know, actually the author meant this on page 236. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like eventually you will have people who are like, like engrossed, but in terms of what it takes to push it forward, the person who's willing to, to put in those weekends, um, to use up those lunch hours and stuff like that, no one will ever be there at that same passion level as you, and mm-hmm. thus no one should get to have input into what your dream is as much as you. Yeah, 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 that, that is true. So then, um, have you ever encountered any moments just so far in your journey where you felt like you wanted to quit, and then if so, how did you handle that? Hmm. So, yes. Yes, I have, but I try not to let myself say in those modes very quickly because mm-hmm. uh, I forget which, I feel so bad that I should, I, I should pull it here on Google so I don't even sound up. But it's one of, um, one of the laws like conservation of momentum, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like an object at rest will stay at rest, mm-hmm. but an object that is in momentum will stay in momentum. Well, yeah. Well, your activities are literally identical to that. Um, I found the, when I was um, finished beast, uh, beasts within our blood, and I had done all this work for it, and then I was like, I was done. And I had edited like three times, had beta readers, they liked it, but I was like, okay, I just need someone to look at it mm-hmm. uh, on the professional side. I wasn't getting anyone who wanted to look at it. So my momentum slowed down significantly because I wasn't go, 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 go anymore. Mm. And the way that I I got out of that after like three or four weeks is I actually started on another project. Um, here's another little hack. Like, please, if you if there's nothing else that you write down, number one, Twitter, get on author author Twitter writer community. Like, it's just such a lifeblood. Mm. And two is, have you ever heard of manuscript manuscript wish list? Mm mm. Okay, that is the hacks mode of this industry that I don't think a lot of people know enough about so literally agents will go on this website or Mm -hmm. like link their tweets to it and say i agent am looking for hashtag manuscript with persons of color with lgbt representation or christian voices Mm -hmm. or fantasy magic realm blah 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 they were literally spell out the recipe of what it is that they're looking to see in their inbox wow and sometimes that will give you inspiration like oh wow that's what that's what the market is right now this is what people want to see yeah so the way i got out of that funk when my book wasn't getting any attention is i started writing about half of an entire another project based off of one of the things that that he just wanted to see so don't stay in that I'm not moving space for long. Mm -hmm. Reignite yourself quickly. Otherwise, you will stay there. Your mind will go to what is easiest, be it Netflix, be it sleeping, be it drinking, whatever. It will go to that. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, I feel personally attacked. No. (laughs) (laughs) The only reason I say that is because I was there too. Yeah. You know what? What's what, what's interesting is I I will provide that I'll end it on a positive note because like in those moments where I was only Netflixing or anime or mm-hmm. Googling, the thing is you can still kind of quasi write in that state if you yeah. literally get a notebook and you say oh that was a moment of good writing ah oh, that was a, a good scene and then yeah. actually force your brain to break down why you start moving the wheels. Mm-hmm. your future project it's amazing like yeah. everything is writing technically yeah yeah that's yeah. so funny you said that oh my god so let me share another thing uh the other day i actually was netflixing and chilling when i had a bunch of things i needed to have been doing but i just was like <laughs> Ugh. you know so i was watching a documentary on netflix i won't say which one because i'm totally taking their format um and uh i was like oh my god i couldn't even get over like what was happening in the documentary because i was so impressed about the layout and the format and the way that they presented this story and i was like oh my god i wrote down what i think was their format and i'm like yep i have a whole idea that's gonna be written in this format and Oh my god, it's it's gonna be so freaking good, and I can't even I can't even write it fast enough because I still have like eight 
eight different things that I got to do, but yeah. that's definitely on my list to get that done because I did write that format down. And honestly, inspiration could come from everywhere. So I agree. You never know. Yeah, let me ask you this. So uh, this is for you, and then also just like brain food for the the, uh, the, the listeners out there. I, I definitely like, have you ever encountered where you come across an idea for a story, and you're like like a tiny little plot. And you're like, oh wow, that would be so cool. My question to you is, what do you do with that idea? Uh. I've had that a lot of times, and so what's happened is I have a lot of unfinished books. Oh, very cool. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's... that's and, and that's just where I'm at, and I just said, you know what, this year, maybe between this year and next, I want to get all those ideas out because right. they're good and maybe somebody need, needs them. Exactly. So yeah. I'm on, I'm on the same uh, boat, uh, but, but, but my hack for that is, like, I would come up with ideas, like, left, right, center. Like, like sometimes I would dream an entire plot of characters, motivation, mm. all of that in, in my sleep. And then I'm like, what do I do with that? And I'm yeah. the easiest thing you can do, and by the way, everyone should have, is a notebook. And you should exactly, write, write it down. down. Like, yep. You have to, otherwise you go insane. But yeah. what I would do is I have uh, multiple first chapters. Because they say your first chapter is what is really, like, kind of going to be like that that world setting or like mm. that, 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 that initial draw, right? So, like, I'll take whatever that concept is and I will write a first chapter for it and then I will put it away and go back to working on my main thing. And what's nice about that is, like, you have this, this, this engine of chaos within that mm -hmm. first chapter and it's exciting and it gets you excited to go back to it. So like take that idea and actually spend the time to write that first chapter about it and then you can be like, okay, you can rest now. I'll yeah. be back later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I absolutely definitely write something for this yeah. particular book that I, we were just talking about. I have, uh, I have the outline down. I don't normally do outlines, but because I, I recognize the format. I turned it into an outline for a book that I, I wanted, I want to do. And nice. so I'm like, okay, yeah, like you said, get it written. And then, okay, I'll, I'll be right back to you at some point. <laughs> at some point, we'll yeah. get you written. And it's, it's wonderful. I think that if writing is in your blood, for some people it's not. You know, I've talked to a couple of self published authors who simply write for the passive income and hey, more power to you. But for some, it's, it's uh and and for me it's this way i feel like it's it's the air that i breathe i i, I got to yeah. I, I have to be writing something or it <laughs> or i don't feel like i'm myself i don't feel like i'm honoring who i am as a person and so man oh man hey this has been wonderful is there is there anything else that you would want to share offer to the community as we wrap up uh yeah I, i'd like to do uh just just two small things is okay. um I kind of want to put stop that marketability piece one more time okay. because uh, I, I tell you guys like my, my the, the exact thing that I did. So I was on um, uh, online and I was looking for concept artists and originally like the cost the cost for that was like up in the five seven hundred dollars for like that high quality mm -hmm. representative stuff, right? Oh wow! But then I started paying attention to who my target audience is going to be and the stuff they were enjoying and a lot of them like myself are fans of anime and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So. You can get inspiration for stories, inspiration for concept art, all of that on Pinterest. Pinterest, mm. Pinterest, Pinterest, Pinterest. Like literally, like your let's say your story involves like a witch battle or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can literally go into Pinterest and say witch battle, and it will show you images of what that looks like. Yeah. And that can like drive your writing process. It can also drive your concept artist, which you can go and say, hey, this is a really expensive project. Can you make like, find someone online on Fiverr or something like that. I'd like you to make, like, a $50 version of this mm -hmm. with my, my characters. My characters' traits look like this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. You put that all together, you give it to a person, and in a few weeks, you might get, like, a marketable image in, you know, um, that you can use on your Instagram. And then for me, I actually pr printed business cards with art from my story. And I placed it everywhere. Bathrooms. Yeah. Airports, before the virus, of course. Um, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And, and like, like, libraries. All of it. Wow. And when I had my agent pitch, I shook their hand, and I gave them my business card. When they looked at it, they were like, wow, what is this? Is this like a, like a battle going on here on this card? I was like, that's a scene from my book. Yeah. You have the vision. I have the vision. Boom. And that's yes. like basically $700. And the thing that she told me, she was like, you know, no one does that, right? 
Like, literally, people, like, come in here and they talk about their idea, but there's so much difference when you show their mm -hmm. idea. Like, mm -hmm. your book idea, your stories, guys, is worth it. So invest in that, that appearance. Um, even though it doesn't have to be expensive, like I said, if you offset it with research. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is if there is kind of, like, one theme of why I'm at where I'm at right now and why I hope that this will be successful in the future is I've turned a love of anime and movies into an agent. That's basically the theme. Mm -hmm. I knew that I liked anime, and I knew what I liked to watch. I liked to watch these gritty fight scenes. I love the way the spectacle, when they bring everybody together in all the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. Love that. And yeah. I said, how can I use that inspiration, that fanboy is to fuel something that I can create? So, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I did. My book is, is, is heavily inspired. You can see it, like, in the, the punches and the kicks and the, 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 the communication. So take whatever it is that you love and actually turn that inspiration into something um, that you can build on. Uh, and then I'd also like to thank my mom, my pa. Uh, <laughs> yes! Uh, and my sister and my wife and also my friends. Shout out to Lover Set. They know who they are. <laughs> yes! Oh, man. And thank you to you as well. Like, oh, of course. Uh, yeah, this is really good. Hey, that was so wonderful. Oh my gosh, I really enjoyed uh, talking to you. Can you tell us again one more time where to find you, um, either on social media and where can we, uh, yeah, actually, where can we find you on social media? Yeah, so a lot of my uh, art concept, all that kind of stuff is on my website at simeoncfnovels.com. Um, my first name is S-I-M-E-O-N, and then cfnovels.com. But easier than that is my Instagram, which is on.page.sage. I do memes, inspiration, stuff like that, and that kind of has, like, the links to my other stuff. And then also, I just launched a YouTube channel of the same name, without the dots, on Page Sage, um, in which I have my book teaser trailer, and then I also have the video where I sign with my literary agent, and I will have more content on there with a lot of this uh, advice, like breaking down more of my process and stuff like that. So please go check it out on Page Sage, and yeah, I'd love to see you all there. Awesome. Thank you so much.